Mass Relations and Stoichiometry. Chemistry requires, requires a method for determining the numbers of molecules in a given mass of substance, which has led to the development of the mole, a quantity of substance that we're going to discuss later. It's easy to weigh a substance to obtain the mass, however, the number of atoms or molecules in even a minute amount is too large to count. Chemists get around this by packaging a number of atoms or molecules in a package called the mole. It's kind of like a dozen, you know, you know a dozen is 12 items. Well, when we say a mole, we mean a certain quantity of items. This allows the chemist to carry out recipes for compounds based on relative numbers of atoms involved. It simplifies the calculations. It's easy to deal with a bulk number instead of individual atoms or molecules. It's, it allows us to scale up on large, large capabilities. It's kind of like cooking for five versus cooking for a hundred. We know if the recipe for 5, we're just going to multiply by 20 to upscale it to a group of 100 people. What we're talking about is the term stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the calculation involving the quantities of reactants and products in a chemical equation. This is the main topic of this chapter. Okay, We're basically taking dimensional analysis to a different level. The molecular weight or of a substance for molecular substances is the sum of the atomic weights of all the atoms in a molecule of the substance. Basically, we're talking about molecules. We're talking about um, <clears throat> molecular weight of a molecule. For example, a molecule of water contains two hydrogen atoms at 1.01 AMUs each and one oxygen atom at 16.00 AMUs given a molecular weight of 18.02 AMUs. So in essence, you're taking 2 times the 1.01, that's your molecular weight of your hydrogen on your periodic table, and you take an oxygen, one of those at 16.00, which is on the uh, periodic table, gives you a total of 18.02 AMUs. That's the mass of one molecule of water. Typically, when you're reading these but, uh, masses off the periodic table, we go to at least the hundredth place, but you do not let that dictate your sig figs. If you have numbers that are greater than that, then you have a lot more uh, decimal places on the periodic table, so you can use more. But in general, if we do it to the hundredth place, we should be okay on our calculations. Now, this is for one molecule. Now, we can't really deal in molecules, so there's another way we get around that, which is molar mass, which we talk about later. The formula weight of a substance is the sum of atomic weights of all the atoms in one form of a unit of a compound. Now we use this term, whether it's molecular or not, um, to describe our uh, formula weight. It's generic for both ionic and molecular substances. We deal with it the same way. One formula unit of sodium chloride, 1 times 22.99, which comes off the periodic table. Chlorine, 1 times 35.45, gives me a total of 58.44 AMU, which is the mass of one formula unit of sodium chloride. Iron 3 sulfate, uh, in this case, you know you get two irons at 55.85, three sulfurs at 32.07, 12 oxygens at 16.0, you got SO4 and you got three of those, so that's three times four, 12. Gives me 399.91 AMUs. That's the mass of one form of the unit of your iron 3 sulfate. Glucose, this is a molecular compound. Do it the exact same way. 6 times 12.01, which is carbon. 12 times the 1.01 for hydrogen. And 6 times 16 on the oxygen. Gives you a total of 180.18 AMUs. That's the mass of one molecule. Molecular weight and formula weight are calculated exactly the same way. But once again, this is for molecules or formula units. We don't deal with that, so we need to find another way to get around this. What we're going to talk about right now is a way that allows us to measure a large number of molecules or formula units. The mole allows us to compare species with the same number of atoms or molecules or formula units, but have different masses. Kind of like if I had 15 bananas and 15 coconuts. 
still the same quantity of numbers, 15 and 15, but they both had different masses. A mole is defined as the quantity of a given substance that contains as many molecules or formula units as the number, number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon. The reference, once again, is carbon-12, like we did with the AMUs. The number of atoms in 12-gram sample of carbon-12 is called Avogadro's number, symbolized by N subscript A. The value of Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a quantity for comparing things. Okay, it's kind of like a dozen. You know, if I say a dozen, it's 12 items of something. Well, if I say Avogadro's number first, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items, or whatever we're talking about. So I can say one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, whatever. Ions, particles, atoms, molecules, whatever. Apples, bananas. One mole of sodium carbonate is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium carbonate. Or I can look at a molecular species. One mole of CO2 is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. Now, to get around dealing with ions and formula units and molecules, etc., we've got a concept called molar mass, capital M, subscript M, small m, of a substance. It's a sub mass of one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula unit or molecules of a substance. So we're using a large quantity of substance to, to be the amount of one mole of substance. This is the term we will use for the most of this course and is done the same way as formula weight except, except that we're using grams instead of AMUs. For all substances, molar mass in grams per mole is numerically equal to the formula weight of the atomic mass units. That is, one mole of any element weighs its atomic mass in grams. So if I look at one molecule of water, you calculate it, it'd be 18.02 AMUs. But we can't deal with this one molecule, so we're going to go, uh, let's talk about a whole mole of water, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. What is its mass? Well, based on Avogadro's number, molar mass would be 18.02 grams of water. Okay, so basically we're just changing the unit. We can use molar mass as a conversion factor between grams and moles. Remember, we talked about conversion factors like uh, 12 inches is equal to a foot. Well, we can do the same thing here of converting between grams and moles. We know that 18.02 grams of water is equivalent to one mole of water. If I have one mole of water, I know I have 18.02 grams of water. This is equal to one. doesn't matter which way I use it. I can use that as a conversion factor and get my units to cancel. Let's calculate the molar mass of one mole of magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. 1 times 24.31 for the magnesium. Sulfur, I got 1 times 32.07. Oxygen, 4 times 16 grams. Hydrogen, I got 14. 7 times 2. 1.01, .01. and in oxygen I have seven sixteens. I have that seven of my oxygen as well. <clears throat> Total, 24.652 grams per mole. So now I know how many grams of magnesium sulfide heptahydrate I have per every one mole of that. That's accounting for Avogadro's number of molecules or I should say formula units. Note in this problem, and one of the reasons I picked this particular one, is you have to account for that hydrate. That seven water, you have to account for that in its total molar mass. Now, a question comes up, how is it possible that I can do the molar mass, all the formula weight or molecular weight, and have the same value but a different unit? Well, that's based on Avogadro's number in AMUs, how we actually did that both on the carbon-12 scale. Okay, Avogadro's number and AMUs are both based on carbon-12 and are the inverse values of each other. So let's convert one sodium atom to grams per mole. Well, I know that one atom is 22.99 AMUs. 
Well, I know the value of an AMU is one twelfth that of carbon, which is 1.66054 times 10 to the negative fourth grams. And I know for every one mole of sodium, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. These two numbers being the reciprocal of each other, which then what happens is my value then numerically becomes 22.99 again. And my units cancel out, giving me grams per mole of sodium. So that's why I can walk to the PR table and do it on an atom of molecular basis, or I can do it on a mole basis. What is the mass in grams of one chlorine atom? Anytime I go from atoms, ions, uh, <clears throat> molecules, etc., to moles, or to grams, and I gotta go across that, I'm gonna have to use Avogadro's number. This is not something we're gonna do a lot. We're gonna do it on a couple of homework problems and do it one on a two on the test, and that's it. Okay? But this is the basis behind why we can do what we do on the periodic table. So anytime you're going across from individual particles, atoms, ions, etc., going to grams, you're gonna to have to go through Avogadro's number to get there. So we'll start off with one chlorine atom. And my goal is mass, so I gotta get from atoms to moles, okay, before I can flip into grams through the molar mass. So I know that for every <clears throat> mole of chlorine atoms, I have Avogadro's number of atoms. So I got for every one mole of chlorine, I get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of chlorine. So my atoms cancel, leave me in moles. Now I can get from moles to grams through my molar mass of chlorine. From we know the periodic table, 35.45 grams of chlorine atoms for every one mole of chlorine, which gets me 5.887 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams of chlorine. Watts in my units to cancel. Get my final answer in grams. Similarly, let's try to do the same thing, but do it for one molecule of HCl. Same thing, I'm going from a uh, individual molecule trying to get to a mass, I'm going to have to go through Avogadro's number. So I have one molecule of HCl. For every one mole of HCl, I have Avogadro's number of molecules, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And then I have molar mass again, one mole of HCl, molar mass of HCl, you got one hydrogen at 1.01 .01 and chlorine at 35.45 adds up to 36.46 grams. I have my units cancel and I'm left with the final answer of 6.054 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams of HCl. Once again, if I'm going from some type of atom or molecules to grams, I'm going to have to go through Avogadro's number. Not something we're going to do a lot. A couple of homework problems, a couple of problems on the first test, and that's about it. Converting mass to moles and vice versa will require using molar mass. Now, that's something we're going to do a lot. Okay, and we'll do a couple of more examples in the next couple of slides. Converting mass to atoms, molecules, or ions, or vice versa, will require going through moles by using Avogadro's number. Once again, something we're not going to do a lot, but you have a couple of problems with dealing with that. Now here's something we will be doing a lot, mole calculations. Converting the number of moles of a given substance into mass and vice versa is, the fundamental, is fundamental to understanding the quantitative nature of chemical equations. The moles of A is basically equal to the mass of A divided by your molar mass of A. Molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, so your grams cancel even your moles. This is your grams per mole, so mass, grams, cancel, cancels. This is the mole and denominator over denominator, which means it's a numerator, which means moles. Converting mass to moles and vice versa require using molar mass. We've got some x grams of A. We've got your molar mass is grams per mole. Your grams cancel, giving you moles. Common thing we're going to do a lot over and over and over in this course. 
So if you know the molar mass of, say, sodium chloride, which is 58.44 grams per mole, you got to realize that's a conversion factor, like 12 inches is equal to a foot. I can use that uh, conversion factor to get from grams and moles. And I'll, the, the way I use it depends on if i got to calculate the numerator with the denominator units or not. So I can use it as 58.44 grams of sodium chloride per every one mole, or I can use it for every one mole of sodium chloride as 58.44 grams. Remember, this is equal to 1. I can use it either way. I just got to make sure I put it in the right fashion for I know to cancel grams, okay, or cancel moles. Let's do a calculation. This is a simple one. Suppose I have 5.75 moles of magnesium. What is mass? Well, if I want moles, got moles, and I want to get the mass, the only way I can do that is through molar mass. Okay, I know I had that conversion factor of grams to moles through molar mass. So I start off with my 5.75 moles of magnesium. Now I know magnesium's molar mass. I have to arrange this in a fashion to get my moles to cancel. So my one mole will be in the denominator. That way it cancels multiply out, and I know how many grams of magnesium I have, and I want to have the correct sig figs here, which would be 140 decimal or 1.40 times 10 to the second grams of magnesium. Typically, I do not let my uh, molar mass dictate my sig figs because there's a lot more numbers on the periodic table, so I'll make sure that my numeric number dictates my sig figs by making sure my molar mass is as many or more. We basically use molar mass as a conversion factor between grams and moles, with moles in this case being placed in the denominator to cancel with the 5.75 moles, but we are converting to grams. Here's another example. This time I want to go from 100 grams of water to the number of moles. Same thing, I'm going to use molar mass and put our grams in the denominator this time to cancel with my grams of water. So I start off with my 100 grams of water, put in my molar mass, I put my grams in the denominator because I want the grams to cancel, multiply out and I get 5.549 moles of water. Simple calculation that you're going to do many many times as we do problems along the way. The number of molecules or atoms in a sample is related to the moles of the substance by Avogadro's number, as I mentioned earlier. This is something we're going to do a couple of times, but not a lot. We know that one mole of, say, HCl is equal to Avogadro's number of molecules. Or, if I look at atoms, I can say one mole of iron is equal to Avogadro's number of atoms. So anytime I'm going from, like, molecules to mass, I'm going to have to th go through Avogadro's number. So here's another example of that type of calculation. So I'll start off. I got 56 milligrams of HCN. Now I want to get to molecules. The only way I can do that is go through moles. So I'm going to have to use Avogadro's number. But since I'm dealing in milligrams, let's go ahead and convert and fix that first. So now I have 1,000 milligrams for every one gram. So now I'm in grams. I now will get to moles through molar mass. Okay, this is my molar mass. 27.03 grams of HCN for every one mole. And I put it in this fashion because I want units to cancel. And now, I mean moles. I know I can get from moles to molecules through Avogadro's number. So I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HCM for every one mole of HCN. So therefore my moles cancel. And I'm left with molecules is what I'm looking for. 1.2 times 10 to the 21st molecules of HCM. Homework. 20 to 22. And once again, as I said, you'll do this Avogadro's number in a couple of homework sets problems in this section, one or two maybe on the test, but other than that, I'm not going to deal with that very much.
but we will deal with going from grams to moles to molar mass many, many, many times.